My name is Kamara. My parents named me Kamara, which means one who teaches from wisdom. In my younger years, I wanted to be a scientist of some sort. So I did biomedical science at uni. I had some experience being a biomedical scientist and I thought, this is really boring. So a lot of time spent in the lab, putting a clear liquid into another clear liquid. It was around the time that I was at uni, I was working with NCS, working with young people. I found that I really, really made to some of them, I made massive impacts. Once I realized, okay, I don't want to be a biomedical scientist. I want a job that will challenge me and is different every day. And I was really thinking about it and I was like, damn, my parents were right. I think I'm going to become a teacher. And honestly, it is the best decision I've ever made. Or, well, when you really think about it, it was the decision made for me when my parents named me. Like it was, it really seemed like it was written in the stars wake up at around 6 a.m. anytime between 6 and 6.15 a.m. to get here for eight o'clock. Depending on what day it is, I will either go straight into the office and start planning the, the specific details of my day, because obviously my lessons have already been planned, but check registers, make sure you have all your worksheets printed. I will have a staff meeting on Monday morning where they sort of set us up, let us know what's going on during the week, anything that we need to pay attention to, any future meetings that will be happening this week. I have my department meeting on a Wednesday morning where we as the department will talk about things that may or may not be coming up, any issues that we have experienced, how we can improve on them. The mornings really are for checking emails, making sure you're up to date on everything that is going on around the school and making sure everyone is up to date with what you're doing. I typically have between, I want to say on average, between three and four lessons a day, probably closer to three. The way I sort of prepare myself for a lesson, you sort of saw me do it in there. Um, go through my PowerPoint, look for any key uh, talking points that I know I need to talk about. Anything that I think I might be, any questions that I feel like they could ask, I will either make sure I bear those um, answers in mind or look them up if I need to. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it's sort of just going through, um, going through at a steady pace. I, I'm, I'm sure the students aren't like fully aware of this and some of them might be, but I'm sure most of them aren't, is just having 30 young people's sets of eyes on you at all times and knowing like, okay, teaching physics. I haven't done physics since GCSE. I haven't done it in like uh, six, seven years now. So it's like, oh, okay. I, know, I, I feel like I know what I'm talking about, but you never know when you're in front of the class, you make a mistake, especially in those first few weeks, they might not trust you again. And it's like, oh, this, it, it felt, I felt like I was putting a lot of, maybe, maybe pressure that wasn't necessarily there, but it was, yeah, it was, it was scary for a while. Books! The date and title are on the whiteboard, and then can we get on with the starter on the projector, please? It, it took a while to really settle in and get comfortable, but I felt like the most important thing to get comfortable was just de developing that rapport with all my classes and really getting to know people, uh, where they're from, their likes and dislikes, like, oh, do you watch sport? What sports do you watch? What teams do you support? Students ask me, oh, do you watch anime? Yeah, I watch anime. What's your favorite anime? It's that sort of stuff. Just really them getting to know me, me getting to know them was super helpful because now it was a case of, okay, now I feel like they can trust me a little bit more. I trust them and the relationship can grow. And then it's, there's not so much pressure to be completely perfect all the time. Oh, sure. Wait, no, 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 I got it, I got it. I wait, wait, I might be totally wrong, yeah. I understand. Oh, sure, I did it. I actually got a. She got a T H. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Wait, 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 you're, you're missing one, you're missing one bit. Yeah, there you go. Ah, right, you got plus. Yeah. And then you got S. Yeah. O. Yeah. Small four, small four. Wait, okay. Yeah. And then minus two. Two minus, but yeah, you got it. Is it because you're cancelling it out? Yeah. Oh, I understand now. So. 
Once you have put your book in the box, can you stand behind your desk nice and quietly so that I can let you roll? All right, guys, have a nice lunch. See you tomorrow. You too, you too. Any times where I'm not in lessons, I'm either marking, planning lessons, I'm doing lesson observations of other teachers going on um, what we like to call learning walks, where you walk around the school, just pop your head into different classrooms, and it doesn't really matter whether it's subject specific or not. You just want to get a feel for other teachers' uh, pedagogical styles because what I've learned this year, one of the things I've learned this year is that everyone is always learning from everyone. And whether, whether you've been teaching for 10, 15 years or you are a trainee teacher, you can learn things from each other for sure. So the learning walks have been a really, really key part of my um, year, just observing different teachers, how even down to how they handle and how they converse with specific students. Because all those relationships are different. Some students get on well with certain teachers and don't get on well with other teachers. And it's, it's nice to see, okay, I, I need to do that. Or, oh, some, that thing was said and either the teacher didn't like that or the student didn't like that. Okay, I need to avoid doing that. I still have my own assignments to do, I'm still learning, I still have my own um, seminars to attend and things like that, so finding the time for those has definitely been one of the tougher, I'd say one of the tougher things to, to work out this year. So it's like you've got three spinning plates, you've got your personal life and your rest time, you've got your work life and then you've also got these assignments and your seminars and it takes at least for me personally, it took a little bit of time to find that balance where I wasn't letting work take over my life, and but I was still paying attention to the things that I needed to do, as well as um, making sure all my classes were up to date and so on and so forth. So yeah, that is that was something that shifted a lot throughout the year, but has finally found a very very healthy balance with me. When I'm not marking, planning lessons or observing lessons, most of the time you will find me down in the gym or the sports hall coaching the basketball academy. It's one of the, one of the things that have really that one of the things that has most excited me about coming to this specific school. The, um, they started the basketball academy. They had that in mind when they saw my CV and they were really excited to work with me and it's been a fantastic experience so far. One thing that surprised me most about the average school day, some days you'll go into school feeling exhausted and you'll come out of it feeling great. And some days you'll come in feeling great, thinking, oh, I've only got like two lessons today. And you'll still come out feeling utterly shattered. Like some day-to-day -day classes, students can really, you can feed off of their energy and you can bounce off of each other and it's a great lesson. You never really know exactly what you're going to expect, how you're going to feel, because how you feel is, re is really, really greatly affected by how your students feel coming into that day. And that's another thing that surprised me most, how much you can begin to think about and care about these students. It, can become a, it becomes a very, very big part of your life very, very quickly. You can become very, very emotionally invested in the development of your students in your classes, which is not something, it's something that I thought might happen, but I didn't expect it to happen as quickly as it did. Within the first three weeks, I already wanted these, these, these students to do, to, to absolutely fly and understand everything. And when they didn't, it, 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 frust it frustrated me because it was, it was never, oh, they're not doing what they need to do. It's okay, how can I improve? And, it really, it, it can draw the best out of you. It really can, because you're always, you're, you're, you're so hungry to improve on how you teach because you want them to do so well. And you know that the, improving the quality of your teaching is one of the key ways in which they can improve the quality of their learning. So the question I actually wanted to ask is, with my year 10 class. At the start, it was, okay, I applied to a couple different uh, schemes. 
but it was the way that Teach First handled every single person as an individual. Everything about it was so personable and it, it seems like they really, really, really care about you as a person and your view, your view of education through every single aspect of the interview stage. Uh, Summer Institute, getting my school, I have felt completely supported at ease and never just felt like a number. They really feel like they value every single person that chooses to go into this because they understand it's not going to be easy. It's going to feel very difficult sometimes and you need that support. Even the small things like they knew I played basketball, they knew I was a big fan of basketball. They knew this school was starting a basketball academy this year and sent my CV to this school. They really wanted me. It's just the small things like that. Whereas they could have sent me to a school that was closer to where I lived, but was just me teaching science. So it's just those other things that really help enrich your teaching experience. And especially in your first couple of years, I feel like that is so important. Really, really important. Lessons finish at three. From anywhere from three to about 4.30 is usually around the time I leave. Depends on what I need to do before I leave because one thing that I have learned is that you don't want to try and take too much work home with you. That's when you begin to burn yourself out because you're not resting enough at home. I like to spend at least like half an hour on my laptop at home, that's max. And then once that's done, I'm closing, I'm turning off my laptop. The biggest thing I'm looking forward to in the new academic year is having my own form for the whole year being in my own classroom for the whole year and being able to customise that and developing deeper relationships with the students that I already have and students that I have yet to teach. Those are definitely the three biggest things that I'm looking forward to next year.